Pierre, well, this I'll is, give this, it, this, JJ, this no, no, JJ. Well, Jay wants it, JJ wants it. No, the Quran prophesied in front of the man Abu Lahab that he was condemned to fell fire. It's all right. It's yeah. a friendly conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You believe in the Trinity? Yeah. Does it make sense to you, honestly? Perfect sense. Huh? Perfect sense. Sorry? Perfect sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, so do you say the three of them are equal? Yes. The Father, the Son, and the yeah. Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say the Son is begotten yeah. from the Father. Yeah, yeah. And you say the Spirit is proceeded from the Son and the Father. The Spirit is it's proceeded according to Christian theology. The Spirit has been sent. It was sent, but it was there in the beginning, wasn't it? But it was sent by the Father. It's weird, but it was there in the beginning. Uh, no, no, because, okay, so. When you say Jesus is begotten, that means he's dependent on the Father, and the Father is not dependent on him. Begotten means... Begotten means... Created, not made, yeah. Yeah, created, not made, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, created is made. Begotten means was already From, there. No, no. It's only begotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Begotten, it can mean create, or it can mean like procreated with, but you say in your theology without a father. Now the problem is, whatever you say of begotten, even if you look at it theologically, like under Christianity, it means the essence from the father. Yeah, Jesus are from the same essence, as or nature, whatever you want to call it, as the father. The problem now here is that the father is independent. Yeah. And the son becomes dependent on the father. So one is independent and one is dependent. Now, if you knew, like, as in more uh, creed or theology, you realize that they say the spirit is sent yeah. by the father. And uh, this is the split between the Eastern and the Western, and Western church. Yeah. The spirit is sent from the father. Some yeah. say from the father and the son. Yeah. So that means he's doubly, he's yeah. doubly dependent on the other members of the Trinity. Yeah. Anyway, in Islam, yeah, I'll just get straight to the point, yeah. In Islam, we believe in one God, only one God. Yeah. And worship is to be, to be direct to only one God. Yeah. In the same way that Jesus uh, believed also in one God. Yeah. And he says, our father who art in heaven, not me in heaven, our father who art in heaven, yeah. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom be done on earth yeah, as it is. Yeah. Jesus said, never ever instructed any of the disciples, companions in any part of his lifetime, wherever he was to worship him. Yeah. At all times he said, there's only one God, the best commandment, the first commandment. Hear ye, O Israel, your Lord the God is one. Even the Bible, if you were to look at the Bible, yeah. the one, the gospel with the highest Christology, John. Even the author of John does not believe that the highest belief of the, uh, uh, Christology meaning like the highest perception of Jesus as a being, a divine being. Yeah, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and etc. Yeah. So this 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 is only found in John. It is not found in Mark, Matthew, Luke, even though they're earlier. Yeah. So it's only found in John. But John is in 17.3, it said, it's eternal life. Jesus is saying, he's talking here. It's eternal life that you should know the one true God and uh, me who he has sent. sent. The only, the one only true God. So Jesus is telling you there's only one God. So how is he God? How is Jesus God? Yeah, when he tells you. You get it mixed between the, 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 the spirit. The spiritual Jesus and the humanity Jesus. So the, the, the Jesus that, that was presented on here, you know, this topic of Lamb of God, what the spiritual Jesus was, begotten and was there from the beginning with God himself. So you know when you say, you, are, you talk about three gods, you know, like Christians might have three gods. I'll make it easy for you, so nobody said that God, nobody knows what God is. So, when we say God in three persons, that doesn't mean there's three gods. So, for instance, we've got, say you might have a Smith family, mm. so you've got John Smith, Jack Smith and James Smith. They're still the Smith family. Mm. So, when nobody said there's three different Smith families, mm. there's only one Smith family. Mm -hmm. there's three people. Where does the Bible teach uh, that God is a family? Well, it doesn't teach it. it, doesn't teach it. This is the point so, we're making. So, so, we have to make an analogy of what's in the Bible because it's not always... What well, God's word is not clear? Well, 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 maybe in the Quran, you might yeah, believe yeah. the Quran is, is, is the, is the, is the word, word of God. God yeah, we do. Whereas, whereas we don't believe that the Bible is the literal word of God. Well, you believe it's inspired by God. Sorry? You believe it's inspired by God. We believe it's inspired by God. Anyway, for example, there's you, there's me, and there's him. We all share the same essence yeah. of humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. We all share, but 
He's a person, you're a person, I'm a person. Yeah, yeah. Three persons, but do we say there's one human? Even though we sure share the same essence of humanity, we don't do it. We say there's three humans. Well, one second. It's the same with God. If you're saying that Jesus is 100% God, the Spirit is 100% God, and you're saying uh, the Father is 100% God, and they're all separate and distinct. One second. I'll just draw the. I'll just, sorry, sorry, I'll just. But if you're saying if you're saying that they're not separate and not distinct, okay. But because your theology says that they're all separate and distinct and each one is 100% God, when you times uh, 100 by 3, it's 300. 300% is 3 times. It's not once. It's not one. So when we say you've got um, eight, there's 8 billion people on Earth, isn't there? But we say there's one civil, civil, civil civilization. Okay. So we're, not, we're not defining God as an amount of people. Hmm? No, no, but we're talking about God. The, the most fundamental commandment, yeah, according to Jesus, is the first commandment. We can talk about the Trinity. He says, hear ye, O Israel, your Lord, the God, is one. So when, when God says one, you're saying Trinity. We can talk about the Trinity, as long as you want to, yeah? And I'm not the most knowledgeable person in the church of the Trinity, so I'm giving you a, 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 from what I know of the Trinity. The Trinity. Well, then I, I can stand here and talk to you about the Quran. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so, so we say the Quran. Uh, let's, look at some, let's look at some sort of modern day values and apply them to the Quran. Okay, well, are we, to, well once again, to, to, no, 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 no you, I'm only let you. I'm not late. Yeah. Uh, did you just say modern day values? Yeah, yeah, from day, derived day, from where? Well, well, let's, just say, let's just say modern day, let's just say, let's just say, let's just say that's Quran. Yeah, as, 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 You're comparing God's word to modern day values. Well, 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 you Do you see the problem you, you, you've got? You, you claim it's God. Yeah. Let's just say. Uh, no, no, this well, is this my is claim, point, yeah. This, this is what I'm getting at now, is that. And this is no disrespect. No, to no, 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 Come through some sort of war mongering um, background. Yeah, married the rich woman in Mecca. Um, one day he goes into a cave. I mean, I've just so many talk. He goes into a cave, comes back from this cave. I've just had a revelation from the angel Gabriel. These are the words of God. You know, started writing him down. Sounds like you described John the Baptist. Yeah, it, it could be. Yeah, it's a very sounds like he's yeah John the Paul. John, yeah, Paul, very yeah. Very similar. John. Very yeah, similar. So it sounds like all the very prophets very you're describing. Yeah. So it's very mm. similar, yeah. Mm. Like Solomon so, or David so, went yeah, to war. Let's take Christianity. Trying to finish the first point you're making. Yeah, let's so. take Christianity out of the equation. Why? No, no, these yeah. are prophets in Islam as well. They are prophets in Islam. So, so in a modern day court, yeah. What Jewry would believe mm. that this man went into a cave, mm. had a revelation of an angel, mm. and then created this perfect book. Okay, good. So, are we going to use secular standards to determine religion? No, this is the first fundamental problem you're having. We won't go to a secular court to tell us about our religion. No. And this is a problem with Christianity, it's been consumed by modernism, liberalism, not and secular. One second, one second, I'll ask you, I'm asking, not, I'm asking. Not, not, and this is the problem. Your, your, your understanding of morality yeah. is not derived from the Bible yeah. or the prophets, it's derived from your own hearts no, and what people not. and what people are telling you. You know, but people are arbitrary, you know. No one, you know, what you believe is right is different from what I believe in right. Yeah. And what he believes in right is right is different from what uh, you believe yeah. is right. So how does how does a third person determine what's really right? I, I Do we believe in a God? an ultimate supreme place of justice or uh, source of justice and we believe that God has spoken and Christians believe this and Jews believe this but when it comes to Christians in the Western world they become secularists and they argue with Muslims as if they're atheists they throw Jesus under the bus they throw the Bible under the bus and they throw Christianity under the bus this is what we as Muslims can't get am I arguing with not you but just generally with a Christian or atheist we say Allah is the best of judges and he is the one who sent down rules and laws and regulations because he is the one who knows his creations better than anyone else and God Almighty he sent Jesus and Jesus says do not think I've come to abolish the law nay rather I have come to fulfill it and whoever 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 breaks the law in the very least he will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven and whoever fulfills the law and teaches other people to 
fulfill the law, he will be great, called great in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. For, uh, unless you follow the, the actions of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you should not see the kingdom of heaven, even in the very least. So what, you've read the Bible, mate? Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, is there the any question? But look, because you, you, know, um, you know that spiel you gave about Prophet Muhammad, you have to be uh, like um, a non-partisan, non-biased. The Prophet Muhammad did get into war, of without doubt. Yeah. Just like Solomon or David or any of these prophets. You know the Jewish uh, people, they were waiting for a messiah, yeah? yeah? Who was a warrior messiah. That's one of the reasons... That, yeah, that's one of the reasons they rejected Jesus. But being a warrior doesn't dis, uh, exclude you from being a, a messiah. Do you understand? So yes, we believe the Prophet Muhammad went into war, but a lot of his wars were defensive without any doubt. Islam is expansionary, as in we believe that Islam, Allah, he sent his messenger Muhammad. He is the one who sent his message in order with guidance so that his guidance will rule the world. Well, you can, you can approach it, whether it's scientifically, logically, yeah. uh, theologically, yeah. look at all the messages of all of the prophets before. Yeah. Yeah. What did they ever teach? They only ever said that God is one. Yeah. Solomon, David, Isaac, Ismail, Abraham, yeah, God, every single one of them. And then all of a sudden when it gets to, even, not even Jesus, Jesus says one God. And then after Jesus, we're told, no, God is a trinity. Do you, do you see? But Islam says, one second, Islam, I'll just finish the question. I'll just finish. You're arguing Islam against Christianity. Yeah. I'm asking you to argue Islam. I know, I know, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's continuity. Forget about Christianity. Tell me why you believe the Quran. Yeah. Forget I'm a Christian. Yeah, okay. Tell me why you believe No, no, but. Christianity. Yeah. Because you're saying all previous prophets believe in God. No, no, no. You get it? Yeah, but let's forget that I'm a Christian. Forget you, forget you. I believe in Islam, yeah, in Islam, because I, naturally we have this fitra. Fitratullah allati fatra nas alayha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, has placed in the hearts of His creation a fitra, a natural disposition. Um, you have scholars in Harvard, in Oxford, they do studies on babies, and they come to the same conclusion even babies believe in God. Why? When babies observe the world, they see order and purpose. They look at the chair and say, okay, that's to sit on. They want to go on. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, you're laughing, but check it. Uh, yeah, I was it. Yeah, I, I get, yeah, no, I know, I know. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. So babies, even babies, this is the fitra in the baby. They look at if a ball rolls by itself, and this is another study. They show signs on their face of amazement. How did a ball roll on itself? They see everything has a purpose. And that's why Allah in the Quran, He says that we created mankind with a purpose. And that purpose was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, wa ma umiru illa li We did not create mankind except that they should worship God Almighty. This is a messenger of all the Anbiya alayhim wasalam, all of the prophets before, from Moses, from Abraham, from Isaac, from Ismail, to Prophet Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad no, 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 Now you asked me a question. Why well, I believe in it? Preaching about God rather than actually justifying the, justifying the belief in God, you know, the belief in the Quran. Not no, because the comfort. Quran, unlike any of the other previous books, is revelation, tanzil. But why do any of that? Oh, let me answer the question. Let me answer it. You know what? I, honestly, I can't stand here, answer a question, yeah? Yeah, and then, because I know we're all excited. I'm excited, you're excited. But <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> but you know what people do? They ask questions. As soon as the person is answering, they ask another question. I want to avoid that as much as possible, yeah? Quran, unlike the Bible or the Torah or the thing, um, Old Testament, claims to be from God. Yeah, Allah says, Tanzilu Kitab min Allah al Aziz al Hakim. It is a revelation from Allah the Most Wise. The Bible it says, it, Paul says, if by my lie the truth is abounded. It, Paul, by his own admission, is saying he's lying, and this ends up in the Bible. Paul, a man who's never met Jesus, is responsible for more than half or up to half of the books in the New Testament. How many books in the New Testament? 27 books. Supposed to be about Jesus and his way of life. And Paul, who never met Jesus, never met him in the flesh, has 13 books authored by him. Do you have the Torah, the first five books of Moses? In over 80 places in the Old uh, Testament, 
from Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It says, Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord, over 80 places. And then it says, Moses died in the land of Moab. If Moses is offering the book, how can he talk about his death in past tense? Hamza died in a high park. How does that make sense? But we're, supposed, we're told that this is a book from God. But God speaks about himself in third person. The Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord. We now know that the Old Testament, was, or the Old Testament of the Bible you have today is composed of more than four authors. More authors. They don't know who. So this is the reason I don't believe in the Old Testament. No, I don't believe... I'm asking you why you believe. You, you, yeah, you, no, no. you didn't listen. The, no, no. You asked me why I believe it. Yeah? Yeah. I told you that this is a revelation. Yeah. One second. This in it. Well, see, one one second. Of, Remember what I said? Look, this here. You asked me if, uh, why. I said yeah. this is revelation. Yeah, yeah. The other books don't even claim, claim in the first instance to be revelation. Yeah. This claims to be revelation, right? As in anyone who's read the Quran, it claims to be revelation. You read it, it doesn't try to tell you a story. It's not like the, the other books which are trying to tell you the story. What's clear from this is that Muhammad is the one, uh, the Quran it testifies to it. It says, وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابِ You have not read Muhammad. Wait one second, listen, listen, please. I listen. The Quran says to Muhammad, I'm telling you, no, you're not, you're not listening. What you're doing is comparing that book. To, uh, to I'm not, you're not listening. And, and saying why it's better than What's your name again? Why is it true? What's your name again? What's your name again? Huh? Huh? J. Yeah, J. Hamza, Hamza. Let, let, just, in the Quran, yeah, 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 it testifies that the Prophet Muhammad yeah. could not read nor write. Yeah, yeah. yeah? This yeah. is one of the evidences. So this, yeah? evidence, yeah. uh, this is one of the evidence, yeah. multiple evidence. So I'm just starting to get warmed up. The Quran says that the Prophet Muhammad not, could not read or nor write. Yeah. This Quran is the highest form of literature yeah, yeah. in the Arabic language. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Can you, you said you're not well versed in the Bible. Can you come with, with your own hand and paper and pen with a book better than King James Bible in English? Can you? <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't. The Prophet Muhammad not only came with the Quran, yeah, he also come with the Sharia, yeah, which is a legal system. Show me one man that's able to come with a whole legal system. A whole legal system. Impossible. So it's come with the Quran. He's yeah. come with a legal system, yeah. Yeah? yeah, and he's also given guidance over 23 years. If the Prophet Muhammad Sallam said one thing that was wrong, all of his detractors would have said you're wrong. He said, Tab yada Abi Lahab, you were tab. What does that mean? Perish the hands of Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad. This verse condemned this Abu Lahab to hellfire. All Abu Lahab had to do from the red point of revelation of this verse was say, La ilaha illallah, that I only believe in one God. Did he? No. The Quran prophesied in front of the man Abu Lahab that he was condemned to hellfire. But he never still accepted Islam. That's all he had to do. One statement, I believe in God. He never did. He died as a, uh, he died as a non Muslim. And the Quran testified that. Quran goes on to more prophecies. It's Ghulabat al Rome. It says, Rome will be defeated. Now, Rome and, uh, was the greatest empire at the time. Yeah, so there's prophecies, there's science, there's um, continuity. What did you say about Alexander the Great? And it doesn't say nothing about Alexander. It doesn't say anything yeah, about Alexander. You, again. You say about Alexander oh, I, I tell you that. Where did he go? It doesn't talk about Alexander. Two things, right? Yeah. In the Quran, it specifically challenges you. Yeah. Yeah? It says, if this is from anybody other than God, there will be found hundred, you know, loads of yeah. contradictions. In 1400 years, yeah. nobody has found one. No, no, the Quran, no, it gives a one. challenge. It gives a challenge. You're talking about the sun set in a, in a, in a murky, murky pool. water. It says yeah. it appears yeah. to be. Yeah. It doesn't say it is. So, the way, so, 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 so you're talking about, yeah, the Quran, say, yeah. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, the sun it's, it's, in the yeah, 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 it's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. First of all, there's a sun set anyway, first of all. Yes. No, the sun never sets anywhere. This is language. Does the sun ever set? The answer is no. It appears. Well, I'll is give a, Jay, 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 no, no, Jay. One Jay, one set. Jay, Jay, one set. I'll Jay, please. Set. Please, please. please, remember what I told you before, you, Jay. Because when I don't want to disturb the debate, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to do it. genuinely speak to you like you're a man. I want to speak to you like a man, yeah, not just preach. Do you understand? So, in terms of the sun, the Quran describes that the sun set, uh, sets in murky water. This is the claim. 
yeah. this is talking about the point of view of, of one a person in the Quran that he, he traveled and he came to a people where the sun set from above them yeah. and it's set in murky waters okay. first of all did any Arab theologian believe that the Quran came from above a people no the Quran describes uh, the earth as a celestial body in motion. Do you understand? It describes it as a circular, one second please, as a circular thing. In the first instance, the sun never sets. Anyone who thinks the sun sets doesn't know science. The earth revolves around its axis, in, uh, axis, axis and it makes the appearance that the sun sets. The word in the, in the, one second, one second. The word in this, the one second, one second. So I'm, let me finish the first, you can't ask a question. Let me finish the first one, JJ. Yes, Jay, let's be honest because I've not tried to ridicule you. Okay. I've not tried to ridicule you. So, yeah, I know, but you're asking number. It's like in, in, a, in a court of law. This is, no, you ask one. Okay, okay, okay. okay. okay Jay, Jay, one second. So, the word there is wajida. What does what, Sheikh, what does wajida mean? Yeah. It appeared. It appeared. But Christians don't care about the language. They've lost their tongue, their Greek. They're Hebrew. They only look to the English language. And that's, that's how watered down Christianity has become. Anyway, I don't want this to become a debate, but you're asking yeah. questions to be forced. Yeah. And um, the point is, yeah. you look like a good man, apart from uh, your, your, your thing, adversity to Islam. Yeah? But the question is, look, you will die alone. I will die alone. Yeah? Yeah. Every single soul should taste death. I will stand before my creator, Jay. You will stand before your creator. I, to be honest, I'm indifferent about you like you're indifferent. Man. I don't care that much about you and you don't care that much yeah. about me because we're strangers. This is reality. Yeah. But you will stand before Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won't be there. And the court will be there and Allah will ask you, God will ask you, yeah. who did you worship? You will have to say, I worship a man, yeah. a spirit, and on top of that, I worshiped you. Yeah. If you can uh, start.